If you're an author or plan to be one, get excited because this podcast is for you. Book Marketing Mentors is the only podcast dedicated to helping you successfully market and sell your book. If you're ready for empowering conversations with successful marketing mavens, then grab a coffee or tea and listen in to your host, international best-selling author, Susan Friedman. Welcome to Book Marketing Mentors, the weekly podcast where you learn proven strategies, tools, ideas, and tips from the masters. Every week, I introduce you to a marketing master who will share their expertise to help you market and sell more books. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. And before I bring on today's guest, I want to share with you an offer that you may well be interested in, and that is a 125-point checklist to uncover profitable income streams from your book. I know that uh, many of you are looking to make money with your book. Here are some ideas that you may not have thought about. If you would like a copy of this, then email me at susan at bookmarketingmentors.com. There's also a link below in the show notes. So make sure that you grab your copy and also subscribe to this podcast because you don't want to miss an episode of our great experts who share their wisdom with you. Now, let's get on with the show. Today, my special guest is Susie Schaefer. Her love of books goes beyond the feel of the fabric, cover, or the smell of the library. Known as the book angel for cause publishing, her passion for helping authors publish quality books and market them successfully through Finish the Book Publishing brings her tremendous joy, especially when they become an Amazon bestseller. Susie's passion for films and acting is served by writing, editing, and consulting screenplays under Movie Muse Productions. Susie's taught workshops and programs for various writing, editing, and publishing groups nationwide, and is honored to be a judge for the Independent Book Publishers Association, Benjamin Franklin Book Awards. When not reading, reviewing, or publishing books, Susie can be found practicing yoga, meditating on the beach, or planning her next travel adventure. Susie was a recent guest on the show talking about turning your book into a screenplay. However, I wanted to bring her back to talk about another expertise that she has, and that is cause publishing. Susie, welcome back to the show, and thank you again for being this week's guest expert and mentor. Thank you so much, Susan. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you for having me back again. My pleasure. I mean, when we're talking about sort of, it's almost like a little bit of an obscure subject, but I think it's very relevant because I want authors to realize that there's more than just selling a book on Amazon, which you and I know is far from the only way of doing things. Let's talk about cause publishing. First of all, what exactly it is, and then How does it work? That's a great question. Cause publishing is really how you can take your book and use that message to drive awareness or build support around a cause, an organization, or something that is deeply personal for you. And the way that works is to find the right cause or organization. Usually people will find something that matches with the theme of their book, the branding of their business or something to that effect so that they can go ahead and drive the awareness. When you partner with organizations, or if you're simply acknowledging the organization in your book, then you have the opportunity to affect the masses by creating a ripple effect of awareness. Why is it important for an author to even consider this? First of all, it helps an author build their platform. Because when you are connected to a cause or a mission, people connect with that. That allows an author to create a larger following by connecting with those people in those types of groups. It's important because authors are always trying to sell more books and create a bigger platform for themselves. So this is a way that they can do that by 
attaching their brand or their book to a mission or cause. What about some of your clients who have done this successfully? Can you share some of the causes that they've been involved with and how they were able to match their book with the cause? Yeah, absolutely. There's a a book right now that I'm working on that the cause is brain health, dementia, Alzheimer's. He is looking for an organization right now that is going to go hand in hand with that, that he can support. And I should say, you don't necessarily have to go after the big organizations. For example, the book that I just finished, um, which was The Pivot Project, which was with a group of 10 new authors that I took them through the process of how to publish. And the end result is an anthology. One of the members was diagnosed with cancer. And not only did we dedicate the book to her, but we also married it with a cause, which was the American Cancer Society. That book, like the one that is going to support dementia, Alzheimer's, and those types of things, you can help drive the book by being involved with those organizations. Now, the American Cancer Society is a huge organization that may not be a good fit for many authors. Like, for example, this author who's looking for an organization that focuses on brain health, we're looking for one that is going to be small to mid-size because you have a, a more of an opportunity to have them help with either book sales or uh, maybe you are speaking on the topic or that type of thing. The big organizations, they get tons of funding and a lot of times it's difficult to actually partner with them in such a way. But smaller or medium-sized organizations usually are looking for different types of sponsorships, partnerships, those types of things. Really, that's what I would say to authors is don't necessarily go after the big ones, but look for something that's more small to medium size and see if they have any types of partnership, sponsorship, anything like that with your book. I um, have another author who he tends to write military historical fiction because he draws in a lot of facts about military war and things like that. He's able to partner with a veterans memorial museum. So they'll be carrying his book for him. And he also will be giving back to veterans programs. So let's talk about realistic expectations when it comes to this, when you do partner with an organization and you find one that's a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. What are the realistic expectations for an author to expect? Well, I think it all depends on the organization and your relationship with them. If you develop a relationship early on and they are aware that you're writing the book and they are kind of with you through the process, it does make things easier when your book comes out. If you've written your book and then you come back to an organization to try and partner with them, that relationship may not have been established. So realistically, you're going to have to do a little bit of groundwork, but definitely it's worth looking at. And because there are multiple organizations within different causes, whether it's saving the rainforest or uh, human trafficking or domestic violence or anything like that, if one organization is not a good fit or maybe they are not looking for a partnership of some kind, go look for another one. So you have to do a little bit of homework. It's like anything. It's just like selling books. You have to do the work. You have to do the marketing. You have to position yourself correctly in the market. So that's the reality. It's not going to necessarily be easy, but in the long run, it'll be worth it because you're going to be developing a broader circle and being able to affect more people by using your book as a tool. Then. Would that lead to, let's say, speaking engagements or perhaps training opportunities? What else would be the byproduct of that? Speaking engagements and training opportunities are absolutely a good way to go. Yes. And especially if if your book is about education or um, like educating children or even educating people that are leaving one career and going into another, then those are opportunities that you can partner with these organizations, get in front of people and get your the word out and sell books. That's absolutely a, a way to go. Another thing is like, for example, what we're doing here today, getting on podcasts, being interviewed on radio shows, writing a blog or writing an article for a magazine. There's a lot of different opportunities uh, once you've published your book. And then when you start making the connections with the cause. Then what you're looking to the cause for is exposure. What else are you looking for there? The exposure to sell books. 
yes, the exposure to sell books, the exposure to drive awareness, the ability to even possibly drive funding for that organization. Sometimes the organization may even have a budget for marketing and may be able to do a sponsorship for the publishing costs for your book. So again, once you determine what your book's about and you're writing your book, and then you're going to talk to organizations or causes about the book, there's a variety of ways to do it. And the best way to approach an organization is to say, here's what my book is about. I would love to partner with you. How does that work? What do you need? And ask the organization because they may say, oh my gosh, this is a perfect fit for, you know, we have an event coming up or we're doing a fundraising blitz or something to that effect. It's always good to ask them, what do you need? How can I serve you? When you think about that, when in the process of the book writing, publishing, would an author start that journey looking for a good fit? I would recommend that once you're pretty much done with the writing of the book, the book is always first and foremost. You've got to write your book, regardless of what the topic is. So write your book first. When you're in the editing phase, that's a good time to really think about, okay, what types of organizations would I like to partner with or would I like to support? You can start that process there so that you're already establishing that relationship as you're going through the production phase of your book. Now, I know that some authors write in their book that a certain percentage of the book will go to an organization. I don't necessarily think that they've partnered with that organization, but it's just something that's near and dear to their heart. So they want to give a certain percentage. But if you do partner with an organization, how might that work in terms of who gets what? (laughs) Right, exactly. Yes, you can certainly note in your book that you're doing a monetary donation on behalf of book sales, that type of thing. I would never recommend giving a percentage because you just never know. I like the wording, a portion of the proceeds. For example, if your book's a nonfiction book and you're publishing under your company, sometimes donations can be a little sticky when it comes to donating from businesses, you might have to look at that and talk to your tax professional and see how that all works out. But in another way, if you're able to partner with an organization to where you're not worried about the monetary donation, but you can offer them a page in the book or even a chapter in your book or to write the foreword for your book. There are different ways that organizations can be involved with your book if it's a good fit and it's a good partnership. It doesn't always have to be a monetary donation. Let's look at how does one actually go about finding one of these organizations? Is there like a directory that you will look at? Should you narrow down into a certain niche before you go looking? What's the process? The process really is to, first of all, you're going to research organizations within those categories. Like for example, if you're talking about brain health, Alzheimer's, anything like that. So you want to make sure that you narrow it down and then look at the organizations as far as, you know, small to medium size, because you're going to have a a bigger impact. And also you're going to be dealing with a a smaller management of that particular organization. So it'll make things a little bit easier for you. I would certainly just do some research online and try and find those organizations that are a good fit with whatever your book topic is. But again, it's about creating this symbiotic uh, relationship between yourself as the author with a book that is a tool to also drive awareness and possibly drive funds to support that organization. What about the timeline in terms of starting the process to actually getting the yes and going through with the whole project, what should we look at realistically? Is this a few months? Is it a couple of years? What are we talking about here? Again, that depends on the organization. So it really depends on how large the organization is and how readily available they might be to make a decision like that. Every organization operates differently. And that's why I say, start looking at this. Once you've gotten the first draft of your book done and you're in editing, you have a general idea of what is the message? What is it that you're speaking about in your book? That's a good time to go ahead and start looking at what organizations you could partner with. And some might say, we're not making a decision on this until next year. Some might say, yeah, absolutely. We want to be involved and 
usually the publishing process can take between four and six months, depending on how you're doing your publishing. If you're using independent publisher or if you're working with a hybrid publisher, depending on that process, it's all about uh, making the connection and saying what works for you, what works for getting the book out, and uh, how is that going to plan itself out? If you're working with a publishing consultant or a literary agent, they can also help you in terms of uh, determining what a good organization is going to be and maybe even help with some of that communication back and forth to establish a timeline. However, of course, it never hurts to have the connections with a certain group because obviously that also can be in your favor. Talk to us about also that, again, there's no monetary necessary expectation or you shouldn't go in expecting that you're going to make a lot of money out of this, correct? Exactly. Like everyone pretty much knows, you don't make a million dollars off of your book. A book is a marketing tool, whether it's supporting your business, supporting your mission, whatever that is, or maybe just supporting yourself as an author. When you're partnering with a nonprofit or a cause organization, it's really not about the money. You need to kind of already wrap your head around that. Yes, it will help you sell books, but it's about the greater good. It's about being able to change the world and have an impact. And by using your book, you have the opportunity to do that, as well as increase your reach with this this organization through their memberships and, and that type of thing. I like to think of it as a ripple effect. For example, say I work with an author and they have a platform of say maybe 500 people that they're able to impact with their book. When I then work with 12 authors, we're now impacting 6,000 people around the world. You can see how by using your book and by authors approaching it from this kind of mindset and perspective, it allows us to have global impact a little bit at a time. Whether your mission is about domestic violence or human trafficking or saving the rainforest or anything like that, then you have the ability to impact the greater good. Yeah, very much so. In fact, I was recently speaking to an author who was exactly in that position, the greater good from an economic development standpoint in third world countries. Yes, I mean, it's very meaningful when you are looking to make a difference in the world, which obviously so many of these causes are. Talk to us about mistakes. What are the common mistakes that authors make when they go into this kind of environment? Common mistakes that authors make is that they expect too much. You really have to look at it from the perspective of developing a relationship with that organization and being of service. Instead of asking what they're going to do for you, you need to ask, what can I do for you? How can I help impact your mission as an organization? And how can we use the book that I'm publishing to do that and to further your cause? It really has to be one of giving and one of service, because that's truly what it's all about when we're trying to do good in the world. Very much so. And I can see that. And as I asked early on, what are the realistic expectations? Because yes, I mean, if you think that you're going to be selling hundreds and thousands of books just because you're connected uh, with this organization, I also love the idea of looking for what I call the Avis effect, the Avis companies or the Avis organizations, the people who are trying harder. So they're not the Hertz, the big guys, the American Cancer Association, but, you know, smaller groups that are really trying harder and and looking to be creative. And I would think that those might be a good match. Absolutely. And I think Sometimes what happens is these smaller organizations, they're working so hard to get their message out and to have an impact. When you're trying to do it all alone, it's hard. So when people can come together and get creative and use things like someone publishing a book about that topic, it really does open doors, not only for the author, but also for the organization so that they understand that, wow, we didn't think about this. And you might even be able to do something like donate books on behalf of the organizations. There's lots of ways that you can get creative with it. 
um, especially if you're using an agent or a publishing consultant, talk to them about, let's get creative. How is this going to look? Again, when you go to that organization, it's important to ask them, where do you need help? How can I be of service? How can I help you? Because that will help you figure out how that book is going to be used to create an impact. What just went through my mind is who in an organization would be the person? Is there a certain title of a person that you would reach out to first? It depends on the size of the organization. Most times when you can search some organization on the internet, it will give you a frontline person to contact. Usually a lot of times they'll have a little form you fill out and say, and you can drop in your information there. So we don't always know who that goes to. If you have a direct line to the CEO or a managing director, then absolutely go to that person and talk directly to them. But sometimes you have to start at the ground level and work your way through to get to the right person. Would you use LinkedIn to look for connections in an organization? Absolutely. LinkedIn is a great resource. I would definitely recommend that you use LinkedIn, do web searches, anything like that. And make sure that you do understand the background of the organization as well, that you understand what truly is their mission. Who do they serve? Because you want it to be a good partnership. And of course, too, they are going to have some type of agreement with when you enter into this kind of conversation, they might have an agreement on how that's going to work. Are you supplying so many books? Do you get speaking engagements? All those kinds of things. Every organization is different. So you have to kind of go into it with an open mind And that's why I say, ask them, how can I be of service? What can I do for you? How can we use my book to help make a social impact? I think the more creative you are with some different ideas that you have some at least up your sleeve when you go in and have these conversations, rather than the expectation that they will come up with something because... Many times these people aren't necessarily creative and they're not thinking in this mm-hmm. in this vein. So I'm sure if you go in with certain creative ideas about the book and how it can help their organization, and as you say, how it can impact the greater good, then that's obviously in your favor. Absolutely. You know, when you're talking to an organization, have some ideas, some bullet points, things like, I'd love to be able to donate books or do you have speaking engagements available? Or would you like to have a acknowledgement page in the book? Would you like to be mentioned in the description on Amazon? So there's a lot of different things that you can offer, but it is still important to ask them, what do you need? Are you fundraising right now? Are you trying to drive awareness around the world? Are you supporting schools in other countries? What is it that you're doing right now and where do you need help? And let's talk about how this can all work together. But when you do have some ideas going into that conversation, it does kind of help that creative process start to flow. And that goes back to what you said earlier, Susie, and that was really knowing and understanding the mission of this organization. What is their purpose in the world? What are they trying to achieve? Because without that, I would think that would be like a glaring error walking in sort of cold. Yes, absolutely. And you want to make sure that if you're going to be signing a contract or an agreement with them, that you're partnering with someone who has the same values and that the mission does meet the organization and their purpose. Yeah. You want to make sure that you do a little bit of homework too, but there's a lot of organizations out there that are small and medium sized that they need help. And there's absolutely no reason why an author can't provide that to these organizations to create that social impact. And at the same time, they're going to benefit as well because it's getting the books into more people's hands. Excellent. Yes, I was just talking to somebody in the fundraising field about different ideas of how you can go to these organizations and could you write something for them? What could you do to help them? Yes. Again, it's looking at their needs, understanding that and Mm -hmm. and moving forward. Susie, if our listeners wanted to get in touch with you and find out more about this and how you can be their book angel, (laughs) what do they need to do? (laughs) They can go to my website, which is finishthebookpublishing.com. I have a whole bunch of fun things on my website, a lot of pineapple pictures, because as you know, my logo is the pineapple. 
and there's a, a free consultation button. So if somebody wants to talk to me about cause publishing or about how to publish their book or just wants to run some ideas by me, people are welcome to schedule a 30 minute chat with me and they can do that right through the website. Excellent. And if you would leave our listeners with a golden nugget, what would that be? The golden nugget is to think bigger than your book, that you have the ability to create social change and impact the world. Yes, I think that is sort of at the core of everything that you've been saying is how can what, you know, our authors put out there make a difference? Yes, and this is a wonderful way to do it, to give back and to make a difference. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that wisdom and coming back and be willing to share a completely different aspect to book marketing, which I think is, I think it's essential. I think it really is. So thank you. And thank you all for taking time out of your precious day to listen to this interview. And I sincerely hope that it sparked some ideas you can use to sell more books. Here's wishing you much book and author marketing success. And before I sign off completely for today, remember the 121-point checklist to uncover profitable income streams for your book? Email me at susan at bookmarketingmentors.com. It's in the show notes as well, the link get your copy. See you next week. The time is now to take action and finally build your book selling empire. And the great news is that Susan is here to help you. Visit bookmarketingmentors.com and sign up for a free 15 minute book marketing strategy session with Susan. She'll help you discover your first steps to marketing and selling your book. Only those who take action are rewarded, so visit bookmarketingmentors.com, and we'll see you again next week.